Hey and welcome back to my channel. So over the past few months, all of you would have come across these complicated graphs along with the term mathematical modeling being used in the COVID-19 pandemic. The whole term of flattening the curve, a lot of complicated things like doubling rate, reproduction number, and all of these terms have been thrown around in the news very, very, very much. But what do these terms mean? And are mathematical models extremely important? So all the policy decisions that have been made during the COVID-19 pandemic have in fact been based on the mathematical models and those graphs that you just saw. So the policies like lockdown to continue for two months, only essential services being allowed and the elderly staying at home and many more policies like 14 day quarantine being a must and the doubling rate, which is improving to 11 days and now 23 days and so on and so forth. All of these policies and conclusions were drawn in fact from mathematical models and the graphs that accompany them. So you might have a bunch of questions like what is mathematical modeling and a bunch of other questions like how does one get started with mathematical modeling? How is it done? And how is it used in our lives every day? Where is it used? In what fields is it used? And how useful is mathematical modeling in general as a tool? Lucky for you, I spent most of my college life studying mathematical modeling and doing a bunch of research in various fields in mathematical modeling. So in this journey, I plan on taking you guys from the very basics of mathematical modeling and discussing a bunch of examples and going to the very depth of mathematical modeling, both mathematically and in an intuitive manner. So do follow along and let's get started. So the very first question, what is mathematical modeling, right? So if I were to describe it in a very, very layman's terms and in a very simple manner, essentially we pick a problem that needs analysis, like in the current situation in today's world, that's the COVID-19 pandemic, right? And we then describe or basically represent that problem using equations, expressions, and other mathematical tools that are available to us. And then we use some analytical and numerical techniques to solve those equations and expressions. And that gives rise to a bunch of results that can help us make decisions. So the graphs you saw in the very beginning of this video are in fact the results that were generated from some mathematical models that describe the COVID-19 pandemic. So once we have these results, what do we do? We basically hope that these results help us solve the problem or identify key factors that would help us in solving the problem. But it's not always possible for us to entirely solve the problem. And that is something that you need to understand as somebody who does mathematical modeling. Your next question might obviously be, where is mathematical modeling used in today's world? So. It'd be pretty interesting for you to know that the biggest use of mathematical modeling is disease dynamics. And you're obviously seeing that with the ongoing pandemic. So we've been told things like one person, every person, every infected person gives rise to two new infections and so on that. And that's exactly what I've drawn. And we will deal with disease dynamics in detail in this video series, because that's something that I've researched the most. And I love disease dynamics a lot. Another extremely common use of mathematical modeling is in urban development and city planning. So where do we keep the factories and how, how can we change the ways factories function so that the pollution is extremely less? How do we plan buildings so that there is no overcrowding and water consumption is in, is done in a very, you know, precise manner. Another good application of mathematical modeling is in the stock market. So the price increases of a stock, then it decreases and then it increases again. And this is in fact due to so many factors. So everybody that actually does trading first models the price of a particular stock using various factors and then studies the trends of those stocks and then decides on when to buy the stock and how much to pay for the stock. So how does one actually get started with mathematical modeling, right? So you might be from a field that I've not described till now, and maybe you want to use mathematical modeling in whatever you're researching. And 
it's obviously possible to use mathematical modeling there. So how do you get started with it? So the way you actually get started with mathematical modeling, and I describe four key factors that I usually use whenever I get started with mathematical modeling is the first one is to understand the problem, right? Half your burden is done if you understand the problem. And the way I do this usually is I ask myself two questions. One, what am I trying to solve? And two, how did this problem arise? And now to do this, the best way is to usually learn more about the field, maybe read some papers that have been published in that field, or maybe understand the field better. So to give you an example, the Corona virus pandemic that's going on right now, we are aware that the way it transfers is from person to person. So if I'm infected, I can infect another person who is in my close vicinity. But if you take another disease like malaria, that's essentially a vector bone disease, the vector being the mosquitoes. So the only way I can get it is if a mosquito bites me, right? So the difference between vector bone diseases and human to human transmitted diseases is simply that in vector bone diseases, you don't necessarily have to maintain social distancing, but in a human to human transferable disease like coronavirus, it makes sense to, you know, maintain social distance and therefore how you model social distance becomes an important factor. So if you understand the problem, it's very easy for you to approach the whole problem and mathematically model it. The second key factor that I always talk about when I do mathematical modeling is to make the right assumptions. And now to give you a good example of it, uh, to give you a good example of it, I'm going to show you, um, you know, something from our high school days. So if you take a physics problem and we had a rope, right? We always assumed that the rope had a weight of zero. And if you think about it, the reason we did that is because if we did not consider the weight of the rope to be zero, we'd have the gravitational force acting on the rope. And then essentially the rope would not be exactly a straight line, but in fact, there'd be a slight dip in the rope. So if the weight were not zero, that'd be a dip. And if the weight were zero, it would be an exactly straight line. So the most important thing to understand when you start with mathematical modeling is that you cannot solve a problem in its most general sense, right? And the thing is, the beauty in mathematical modeling is you have to make the right assumptions. So if you make too many assumptions, you end up with an extremely specific problem and there's no point solving it, right? On the other hand, if you make just a few assumptions, like the one here that weight is zero and it helps you solve the problem. So if it helps you solve the problem with just a few small assumptions, that's a great thing and you're good to go and you'll get results which are generally pretty effective for you to use. So it's very important. The, very, the second thing is to make the right assumptions. Now, the third thing is to use the right tools in modeling. So there are a bunch of tools like ordinary differential equations, partial differential equations, differential algebraic equations, and many other tools. And if you don't know what any of these things mean, don't worry, I'm going to be dealing with these things in detail in the lectures to come. But just to give you an example, so dy by dx equal to one is an ODE. It's an ordinary differential equation. If I have dy, dou y by dou x equal to say three, that's a partial differential equation. If I have an ODE and an algebraic equation, say X is equal to five. So this is an algebraic equation. So these two together, so I have an algebraic equation. So just to show you better. So I had a differential equation. I have an ordinary differential equation. I have a partial differential equation and now I have an algebraic equation. And these two together, in fact, give rise to what is called a DAE which is a differential and algebraic equation. So these are just some tools we use in modeling things. There are a bunch of other tools which we will talk about in the future lectures, but it's always right to pick the right tools in modeling. And when I come to the last and the fourth and most important factor, it's once we actually use these tools and then solve it, it's to come up with the best policies. And when I say policies, I use it very loosely. I mean by coming up with the most meaningful conclusions and coming up with the most insightful strategies on how to go forward and how to solve the problem. So these are the four main things I keep in mind when I start with a mathematical modeling problem, right? And the most interesting thing 
about mathematical modeling is that you can use it in almost every field. So my plan with this video series is essentially to go on and on from the very basics. This was just an introductory lecture. I was just introducing what mathematical modeling is and how one can get started with it. And in the lectures to come, I'm going to go in detail with specific mathematical models used in very specific fields and also some general concepts and then build up from there and go into the depths of mathematical modeling. So my plan is that I'll release one video on mathematical modeling every Sunday. So it'll be like a video series. This is the first video of the series. The next video will be coming on this Sunday and then the consequent videos will be every consecutive Sunday. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like if you like the material and please comment if there's something that I can do better. If you have a particular style in mind, if there's something that you'd like me to cover in this video series, make sure you comment so that I can account for that and make material on it. And please do subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next week with another interesting episode of mathematical modeling. Thank you.